Hey Mike, how do you uh, activate launch control? Easy man, throw it in dynamic, put it in sport, press ESP off, hold the brake. <laughs> What is up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you my 2018 Audi R8 Spider. I'm so pumped you guys to bring you this car because thanks to you and your following, I could finally afford myself a 2018 Audi R8 Spider. Oh my God, thanks to 50,000 subscribers. We are almost at 50,000 subscribers. And every single one of you paid for this car. How does that make you feel? You know, like every other YouTube video out there. Now I've had this car for about two years. I bought it with 4,000 miles and today it sits with about 16,000 miles. And honestly, I love it. It's an awesome car. But is it a supercar or is it not a supercar? That is the question. But regardless of that, it's my car. And it's my car thanks to a lot of things I do in my life. So if you want to follow that below, I talk about real estate, I talk about YouTube obviously, I do talk about multiple streams of income, and basically personal finance. So if you're interested in that, follow me down below. But let's get back to the car. Now Volkswagen stock price this year has shot up like 35% and that is because they're crushing it in the EV world, which means cost cutting and bye bye V10 motors. So that is a really good reason to shoot this car. Now R8s came out in 2008 as pretty much like a movement shaker. I mean, they changed the game when it came to like an affordable supercar because at that point it was affordable. This stuff, a eh, little bit different. But it came out 2008 all the way to 2015. And there was times in 2010 to 2012, I was gonna pull the trigger on the old generation RE, but I decided to invest into real estate instead. So I waited all the way to the end of 2017, which is when I got this. Now, I will tell you that the 2017 is based on a Huracan. Now, everything's pretty much the same as a Huracan. It's 70% Huracan. Really, it's motors made in Hungary, which is what this one has. The shell is from an Audi space frame, which is what this one has. It has a lot of pieces. The only real difference is that it's shipped to Italy to be built and shipped to Germany to be built. That's the only difference. Now, 70 employees hand put 5,000 pieces together to build this Audi R8. That's 5,000 pieces they hand put together. And there's 90 different lasers that check this car to make sure that everything is to spec within 0.1 millimeters. So it's basically as tight as you're gonna get. Now, back to this generation. So 2017 to 2018 kind of looked like this. They skipped 2019 and then went to 2020. But we'll really focus today on the 2017, 2018 body style, which is what this one is. Now, if you look at the front bumper, this is really weird. Come here, this is what I want to talk about. This is gonna be a little bit more casual of a, a review as opposed to more structured. Now look at this front end. See how this is gray and this is black? Like, what were they thinking? Like, who does that, Audi? So in 2018, Audi sold 1,782 R8s combined, spiders and coupes. And in Canada, they sold 200 R8s in total. Now, how many spiders and coupes? I have no idea, but the answer is there's probably about 40 or 50 spiders kicking around in the 2018 year. Now, why did I pick red for a color? Now, the answer is R8s are sort of an underrated supercar and I didn't want to get something that was kind of boring. I didn't want to be trapped in a coupe. I do like convertibles. I feel like you can spend this kind of money. You kind of want to use it and be out there. So this made sense to me to get uh, the brightest car, car I could get. Now they made it in yellow as well, but I didn't want to get it in that color. I wanted to get it in red because it's just brighter. And for me, I love convertibles. So there you have it. Now, how does this compare to a Lamborghini Huracan? Now it's kind of a double-edged sword. 
See, the problem is, is that people sort of toss this in like, yeah, it's got Lambo parts. It's not a real Lambo. It's kind of almost the same sort of basket as people that have like an Alfa Romeo with the Giulia with the Ferrari motor and they say, well, it's got a Ferrari motor, so it's kind of like a Ferrari. Except this is a little bit different. It's kind of the same. Maybe this is all justification from a guy that has an R8 or maybe I should upgrade to a Lambo, but it's kind of the same thing. So it's kind of a waste of money. So I'm happy with my R8. We are at 50,000 subscribers and thanks to you Accelerate Loyalists, we wanna give something back to you. So comment below whether you'd buy the R8 or you'd buy the Huracan, if you had the money, because they are different, R8 or Huracan. So tag, comment below, leave your handle, whether it be on Instagram, Facebook, or on YouTube, leave your handle below with your choice, whether you buy an R8 or a Huracan. And when you do that, we're gonna pick six winners, three from North America and three internationally, because obviously we get a ton of people from all over the world that watch our stuff, which is crazy. So comment below and we've got an Accelerate swag bag to send to you, thanks again, 50K. All right, so let's show you under the hood of the Audi R8. Now, I do have some stuff hidden here. One is a box that contains an ECU unit so I can boost my power. Two, I have a car, indoor car cover because Audi does not sell an outdoor car cover. So I got this thing for 550 bucks US just to keep my car clean. I haven't opened it because it's parked indoors. But this is on my future car. Inside this box is a tuning kit for, can't tell you, next review. So Audi gives you this case. Oh, what do we have here? Accelerate swag. Okay, check this out inside. So this is a tire kit. Not used, right there. Okay, so that's what they give you when you get this car. Also, they give you this thing, and I'm gonna show you this. This is basically, a, check this out. This is a wind deflector, but it's the dumbest thing in the world. I gotta show you this thing. This is the world's dumbest wind deflector because the car has a glass wind deflector built into the car, but then they give you this secondary wind deflector like for more wind deflecting. I'll show you these guys in a minute. So these headlights are the new generation Audi headlights. These are not laser lights. These are just the regular LEDs. But the cool part about this specific bumper compared to the 2020 is that this flows continuously. This doesn't have a break as you'll see in the 2020s. I kind of like this design, this style better. It's just kind of one piece. And I do like the sharp edging that goes down. Now on the side here, this does not have ceramics. This has your regular brakes. So they are black. This does have a black package, but it's sort of a weird black package because they still have chrome on the front grille and there's still some chrome pieces which I would have replaced to black. And maybe I might do that. What do you guys think? The other cool part about this specific car versus other R8s is that this actually has functional grills. So all the vents are actually functional. This is functional to the brakes. On the side here, this is functional to a rad that's right behind here. So they are functional pieces. There's no fake function like the coupes that are up here and in the front, they're fake. But in this specific one, there's no fakeness. It's all real. Now one of the drawbacks with convertibles are the lines when it folds. So the folding lines are kind of annoying to see. Also, when you do pressure wash it, you've got to put on this lowest setting. Otherwise, you will actually fray some of this top. And this top costs 27,000 bucks. I know because I looked to actually replace it because I have a bit of fraying on the other side. And I was like, <laughs> forget it. Now this specific one had the carbon exterior and carbon interior package and part of that is the carbon side blade. Now it's a half side blade. On the new generation stuff they have a they have sort of a two side blade. They have one down here and a little one up here and that kind of sucks compared to the original one which had a full side blade all the way up. I really like the original one which is why I didn't get a coupe and I picked the Spider. So this actually has a pretty thick top like this is pretty meaty it's all encased into one fabric liner it's not separated it has multiple liners it's all sort of encased in this, and it's like a big fat pillow and you can see the structure and the build of this it's obviously built very very well but one of the biggest downsides to having convertible is you can't see the engine the engine is all encased so that's the one benefit to having a coupe you can kind of see it but this one is just sort of all underneath here which is not so good. But we've got this massive spoiler that comes out. Look at the size of this spoiler, it's huge. You can have like a picnic back here. And this is carbon fiber. Yes, it is. Remember I was telling you guys about this wind deflector? So this is the actual wind deflector that clearly says hungry on the inside. But this is the one that comes with the car that's just 
push of a button. And then you've got these little things that slide in there, and voila. Voila, it's the wrong way. Okay, let's try that again. This way, put it down. You've got a dual wind deflector. It's a bit odd. Who has a two wind deflectors? Like if you couldn't make one properly, make this bigger or thicker or forward. Maybe it's because it has these guys. What do you guys think? Let me know. If you think it's because they have these bad boys, those things eject upwards in case of a rollover. So they're rollover bars that are hidden in there. Maybe they've got it because of this. What do you think? Two wind deflectors? Odd. So the two most annoying parts of this car is one, check out this key. This key is so ghetto. And secondly, is check out this engine. Look at what you can see and look how much this costs. This has got the carbon engine kit of $3,000. These pieces of carbon cost $3,000. I want my money back because this is worth it. This carbon here is partly the reason I picked this car because the carbon looks awesome. This big wide booty is why I bought this car. And if you don't know what these things are, this is where the top sits when it's closed on both sides. So let's talk engine. Now this has the V10 non-plus motor that makes 532 horsepower and 393 foot-pounds of torque. Now this horsepower is made at 7600 RPM and the torque is made at 6300 RPM. Now this redlines at 8,250 RPM, and that sounds sick. And I cannot wait to show you guys how this thing sounds. But I'll show you how the exhaust sounds on the better motor, and even the Decinium, which is the most expensive R you can buy. So check this out. That sounds awesome. What do you guys think? Do you think I should get an exhaust on this thing or not? Now this has made it to a seven speed sequential gearbox or a DSG gearbox. And it also does have cylinder deactivation and direct injection. So that's kind of all new when they produced this R8 in 2017. Now, what do you think about the exterior of this? The only thing on the back that I don't like is I would probably maybe leave the badge, but I would definitely change these exhausts. I hate the fact that they're chrome. I want to have black exhaust and maybe change this rear valence. But spoiler is on the fence for me. I actually don't really like those big wing spoilers. I like the fact that it's clean. What do you guys think? Clean spoiler or shopping cart spoiler? All right, so I'm in the 2018 Audi R8 and let's talk about seats. This does not have the quilted. These are just ordinary basic seats. They're not buckets. They're just the regular seats you get in the R8, but they actually do have a cool feature. They actually have the speakers built into the headrest, which is the best part of these seats. They are Bang & Olufsen, and this sound system in this car is magical because if you get supercars or high-end cars in terms of toys, the steer system sucks, but this thing is phenomenal. Best sound system out there. But one of my pet peeves with Napa leather is the fact that they do crease. So the crease marks on the inside here just drive me nuts. And also, I must have a pokey bum because these are rippling right here on the booty. But you can make the seat wider and you can make it longer, so it's fully adjustable. So that's obviously an essential part of having a sports car. Now, as far as the interior goes, this is not the brand new Audi tech. This is one generation back from the Audi tech, but it still does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I assume. I don't have Android, but I'm assuming it does because it has Apple CarPlay. Now, this also does not have the little wet, dry snow toggle that you can do on the performance steering wheel, but it does have all the carbon fiber trim. There's carbon fiber 
on the dash cowl here. It doesn't have it on the back. So this is sort of a two-stage dash cowl. It's got it on the front and it's got it right behind in the carbon. It does have it on all the vents and it does have the center console here in carbon. There is a piece of piano black right here tied behind here just to offset these buttons, but everywhere else is carbon. One thing I will say, there's not a lot of storage room in this car. They have the world's worst cup holders, which are here, which constantly, you know, right here, kind of annoying and really an afterthought in my opinion. It does have decent storage back here that you can sort of put here, but it does have a CD player and two SD cards and a SIM card. But Apple CarPlay is all you're gonna use because the sound system is phenomenal. Now this is a very, very comfy car and I'll get into that in the drive. But as far as anything else in this car, it's pretty straightforward. There's obviously no tech in terms of automatic braking, blind spot indicator, there's none of that. It's basically a driver's car. And I do like the way these vents are. It's sort of reminiscent of the TTRS because it does have some TTRS features in here. As far as the display goes, this is sort of the meat and potatoes. How do you really hit it at the ballpark when they launched this with this virtual cockpit with the nav where you can zoom in, zoom out? This was pretty cool when it was launched back in the day. Now it's just kind of standard where a lot of vehicles have it. But the cool part about it, it does have some engine data like power torque. And my most important piece is the G meter. So I've hit 1.2 going left, 1.2 going right, and obviously 1.2 slamming on the brakes and you can change it but there's only really one change you can make you can sort of change it this way where you can have the tack right in front of you and that is where i leave it and that's how everybody should drive this car but the biggest pet peeve about this car before we take it for a drive is the shifters these paddles are plastic what's up with that plastic man plastic Is it easy to launch this R8? So I'm gonna show you how it's done. Pretty straightforward, very simple. Let's come to a stop. Right now I'm in comfort. I'm gonna simply just press the drive select button to go to dynamic. So now exhaust flap open, gets more aggressive. Now when I'm normally driving dynamic and I'm putting my foot to the ground, the gear shifts are very fast. But when it's in launch control mode, the shifts are insanely fast. Now check this out again, I'm in Drive select dynamic. I press the ESP button off one time. Foot on the brake, foot on the gas. Hear that thing? See, it's like launch control program activated. And I let go of the sidestep, hold the steering wheel, and pray. <laughs> it's just like a push. <laughs> you see, it doesn't matter if the Tesla does zero to 60 or the Taycan does zero to 60 in like two seconds or 3.1 or the fact that this does it in 3.4. The, the sound, as I said, you have to have this window down and the top up to actually get the full sound, but the sound and the push and the different types of pushes, because the Tesla and the, all the electric stuff, they give you the push, but it's consistent. This thing pushes you, it linear goes up, pushes you again. It just, it's just, visceral and emotional and that's why we buy v10s or v12s whatever you can afford i guess or v8s or twin turbo sixes when i drive this thing i drive it an individual i set the suspension to comfort and i set the acceleration to dynamic because i like to have a soft ride and then when i want to hammer it it's just simply I put the windows up and I put that back screen up and I have more of silence. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear me, hopefully you can hear me well, so I'll put the top up so you can hear me for this little drive time. And for me to do that, I just gotta go under 40 kilometers an hour, and press the button, and now the top rolls up. So let's count how long this thing takes. We're at the 50 second mark when I press the button, and now we are at the Let's count this. So that's 16, six, 17 seconds. And then I gotta turn the brightness up on this so you guys can see me. There we go. Back to life. It's funny because I drive this thing in comfort probably 80% of the time, which means the exhaust is quiet, the suspension's soft, the steering is soft, very easy and light to turn. 
Um, so the only real complaint I have it when I do those driving modes, because the driving modes is good because they do make a difference, but where they suck is accessing them. They've got the drive select knob here, but they also, I can obviously use the center console and turn it and look at the screen and then adjust from different driving modes. But when I hit the drive select button here, the first one's comfort, then it's auto, dynamic, individual. So if I'm in comfort and I'm cruising around and then I wanna go into dynamic because I wanna you know go around the corner fast, whatever, I actually have to go to th through automatic first and that's so annoying. Get rid of automatic. Just give me comfort, auto, auto oh, sorry, give me comfort, dynamic, and individuals. Because individual, as I said it, I told you, I set the steering to very, very light. I set the suspension to soft. But I set the engine and exhaust to uh, dynamic, which is the most aggressive trim. So anyways, I'm in seventh gear in comfort. And if I put my foot to the ground, and I'm going to show you guys how long it takes to go from comfort seventh gear this thing wants to get seventh gear like in comfort it's bet it's always in sixth or seventh gear at all times no matter what speed you're in now it went up to fifth because i'm going on a little bit of an incline but foot to the ground here let's get it to seventh and i want to show you guys how fast it goes from seventh gear so here we go you ready let's go foot to the ground one two three foot to the ground so one thing i will say is let me go back into quiet mode here one thing I will say is in a Spider, it's not as loud as in a coupe. In a coupe, it's a lot louder in the cabin, but in a Spider, it's quiet. I can hear the, I can't hear the exhaust. I can hear the engine more than the exhaust. The only way I can hear the exhaust is when the top is down. That's the only way I can hear the exhaust. Otherwise, it's all engine in here, which kind of doesn't sound as good as I want it to be in the cabin. Outside, it sounds mean. When the top is down, it sounds mean, but when the top is up, there's so much insulation here, because it's quiet, that I can't really hear the exhaust. It's, it's engine. It's engine. It's all engine. And I can hear like the pistons go up and down. So it's a really weird concept. So if you are looking at a coupe or a spider, the spider is definitely quieter in the cabin. But I like the accessibility of having sun when I want to in a second. That is money, hands down. But as far as suspension and daily driver feel, I drive this thing, as I mentioned, when I bought this thing, I bought it with about 4,000 miles or 7,000 kilometers. And now it has almost 23,000 kilometers. And if my math serves me right, that's probably around 16,000 miles, maybe? Guess, foot the ground. That's in comfort. So it doesn't have power and comfort. It's just that if I want to go into dynamic and, and firm everything else up, it just is one extra step, which is kind of annoying. Everything's driver oriented. So some people don't like the fact that this is from a TT. This is kind of like a big boy TT, which means everything to control is basically in front of my face. There's no screen for the passenger to see. It's all in the driver. Now that's pretty common in a lot of cars. The only difference being is that in some other cars like the Ferrari, you can actually get on the passenger side, you can get its own display. Whereas this one, you can't. It's solely in the dash in front of you. Now I have the top up because obviously you want to make the audio half decent when you're watching this video. But people always ask me, how's the structural integrity of the car? Like, is there cracks and rattles? And one of the most annoying things in the world is having a rattly car. And this isn't rattly. The only thing I will say that can get rattly is when you have the seat kind of all the way back and it's against this, it does maybe make a little bit of noise. But other than that, it's very silent, obviously. They've done a really good job to make this thing sturdy. Most convertibles, when they go over a bump, the whole chassis kind of shakes and, shift and shifts, but it doesn't do it in the specific one. And even though this is a 2018, they have done some small little tiny finishes that I love. The fact that these things are still touch and they're full LEDs, they're white. There are 2021s that have come out today that don't have LEDs and they're not even white. They're like yellow, which is still crazy to me. Now, one of the biggest pieces for me that was hands down in buying this specific R8 was the fact that I could get warranty that was nine years or 170,000 kilometers, which is basically about 110,000 miles. That is crazy. The fact that you can get basically a Huracan with warranty that long, to me, was a no-brainer. So I'm going to keep this thing for a long term. I don't plan on selling it. Obviously, in the world, everything's for sale, but in, I don't plan on putting on the market to try to sell it to actually get money out of it. If it sells because somebody wants the car and I find something else that I like, sure, I'll do it. But I wanted to have that security that I could buy something with that much warranty that if something did happen, well, it's covered. So another thing I took into consideration when I bought this was I spoke to a whole bunch of different techs that worked on different brands. So McLaren, Ferrari, Lambo, which is obviously similar to this. Um, 
And the Audi kind of stood out because one, because I get the warranty, and two, because I asked them like, what years can I buy that I can really beat the snot out of and actually still hold well and doesn't give you problems? Like, what are the problems that these things can give you? And this specific car, not this exact car, but this specific model of car with the V10, it's pretty bulletproof, and that's kind of what I wanted. I want something that's just easy to get into start that, as I said, could tow to a dealer that is pretty close because you want a dealership that's close by. You don't want to have a dealer that's 500 miles away, you know, or 1,000 kilometers away that you have to tow, and then you got to pay huge dollars to get it there. You just want something you can get in and drive, and the dealerships are on the corner. Because crazy enough that Volkswagen dealerships can actually work on this car. Now they have to be R8 specific dealers to get certain warranty pieces. But if you need an oil change, you can actually get it done at a Volkswagen dealer. Which is pretty nuts that I'm this Volkswagen dealerships everywhere. So I've driven a Huracan and a Huracan is basically like putting this in dynamic, but maybe a little bit more firm all the time. It just doesn't get any softer. So it does handle better in terms of just handling, it does handle better. This thing has a slightly higher top speed because the great gear ratios are slightly different. But other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same. Now to live with a Huracan every day, I feel like a bit more like caring. This one, I don't have to care as much. It sort of just does everything. I want it to, I can park it in a parking lot. I don't really have to stay 15 cars away from the next guy. You know, I just feel like it's just a more livable everyday car. And that to me is awesome to have because it, it'll work for any age. I'm 38 now, it would have worked for me in my 20s, it worked for me in my 40s. It's kind of an everyday car and that's where I think that a lot of people will look at this thing and say, yeah, it's not a Lambo because yes, it doesn't have that exclusivity or that like care factor, but from an everyday factor, there's not much better than this. As long as you like it style, obviously. So how expensive are R8s to maintain? Well, for me to do a simple oil change, it runs about 250 to 400, depending on where you go, or depends on which dealer does the servicing for you. And in terms of brakes, just the parts of the brakes of a non-performance, so this does not have ceramics, this just has regular brakes, and just the cost in parts is around $4,000 plus labor, so expect a brake change to be about six grand by the time you're all said and done. So that's usually the two numbers people wanna know. And in terms of tires, they range anywhere from $1,500 to about $2,500. So that's kind of your thought process of what it's gonna cost you to maintain one of these things. As far as engine goes, bulletproof. Tranny goes, bulletproof. But Mike, what about driving in the winter? Well, great question. This is all wheel drive. Is it designed like every other Quattro system out there? The answer is no. This is sort of a, you know, it'll help you up your driveway sort of four wheel drive system. It's primarily rear wheel drive. It has a mechanically actuated front wheel drive system. But the meat and potatoes is in the mechanical rear diff this thing has. This thing grips like crazy. It's very different for me to lose control of this car. Very difficult. Now, there are a bunch of videos out there where guys have flipped this thing or have skidded and crashed. And that is because it's just so easy to drive that to get to the limits, isn't easy. It's not easy to get to the limits of this thing, so it just keeps going, it gives you all that confidence, and just gives you that confidence that the only way to kind of break through it is like by going to the extreme where the tires have no more grip. All right guys, well I hope you guys liked this video on this 2018 Audi R8. If you guys have any questions, always hit us up in the comments below, or jump on our Instagram and follow us. Until next time, accelerate out.